thought I would show how you're able to use epoxy resin for artistic casting. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and cast resin inside this really simple wooden frame that I made and put a design in there. The frame will later be able to use as a top of a box. It'll have what almost looks like a colorful stained glass effect inside of it. In order to do this, you need some sort of a mold or something to hold your, your pieces into while you do your pours. In this case, I just have this uh, plastic uh, container and the, um, the resin should be able to pop right out of it very easily. I'm going to go ahead and use Total Boats, what's called Thick Set Casting Resin. Uh, this stuff is great because usually with the traditional resin, you don't want to pour more than about a quarter of an inch. As resin cures, it uh, gets hot, and as it gets hot, the heat can cause bubbles and warpage within the resin. So for that reason, typical resins you only put about a quarter of an inch in and it doesn't get too hot. The thick set um, cures at a slower rate, at a lower temperature, allows you to put thicker amounts in. And in this case, uh, this is only about a half of an inch. And with this you can do probably about three quarters of an inch uh, without any issues. So this is what I'll be using today. The other thing I'm going to use to decorate everything is the stuff called alcohol inks. Resin um, is, uh, dissolves in alcohol. Alcohol is a solvent. So alcohol inks are really unique because when you put these in resin they end up spreading out in ways that are really unique and permeate throughout the resin and blend in unique ways. You'll see how it turns out when I'm done. Okay. I mix up the resin and I let it sit for about five or ten minutes. Letting it sit for a while is a good idea because it allows bubbles in the resin to start coming to the surface and breaking away before you do the pour, so you have less bubbles to worry about. I've got my frame sitting inside my mold. However, because wood floats, you want to make sure that you do something to secure it so it doesn't float out when you do your pour. What I've done is I've taken a couple of scrap blocks. I covered the tips with uh, packing tape, so if any resin gets on there, it'll just pop right off and it won't stick to my final piece. I'm just going to go ahead and hold these in place with a couple of spring clamps. Once I've got this in place, I'll be ready to go ahead and do my pour. Okay, ready to go. Not much to it. I'm just going to take it. I like to pour in in a thin stream so that way it helps to uh, loosen up and break any bubbles that might be in there as I do the pour. There we go. I've let this sit for a few more minutes. A lot of the bubbles have come to the surface and popped on their own, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of just a few that are left. Got my torch here, I'll go ahead and light it up, and you'll see just do a quick sweep. All right, that's all it takes. The bubbles have been popped, I know you can't see them in the video, but trust me, they're gone. And now I'm going to go ahead and start playing around with the alcohol inks. Start with a little bit of yellow. You can see how that color is spreading pretty rapidly and it has leaving a little bit of a haze between them. I'm going to put a little teal on top. For those who don't like my color choices, recognize I am not a painter. Now the next day, this thing is all completely hardened, it's ready to pop out. I'm going to go ahead, 
tap it on the on the tabletop here, manipulate the plastic a little bit. Let's see if this thing comes out or not. Perfect. Popped right out. There it is. Next step is to go ahead, cut off the excess around the edges. Okay, now that I've gone ahead and cut this, you can see it looks like quite a bit of a mess. However, once I sand it all down, it's going to look terrific. I'm going to start this off with a coarse grit, work myself down to about 220 on the, on the belt sander. Then I'm going to move over to the random orbit and continue going to about, probably about 400 grit over there and then decide what I want to do next. So, um... One thing to be careful about is when you're doing this is that you don't want to generate heat since resin softens up in heat. So you'll want to be light um, with your touch and occasionally feel the back. Make sure that doesn't feel like it's warming up. Okay, I actually set it down to about 320 grit. You'll notice that I sprayed down um, between grits with just a little bit of water and wiped it down to get rid of any of the residual dust. Now I'm going to switch over to um, micro mesh pads. For those who don't know, micro mesh sells pads that will fit onto your sander. So I'm going to go down through some of the grits. I don't need to get this to be glass smooth, I just need to get it close. Okay, next step is to go ahead and polish it out. I'm going to go ahead and use this ultra high gloss plastic polish. This particular one is made by Hut. It works well. Almost any plas any almost any polish that's designed for um, plastic automotive work and such a work. Okay, there's the back side. Nice and shiny. So here it is, ready to go in the window, use this little box, or anything else you could think of. It was a good, simple, easy, fun project, and one that I recommend you try in your own workshop.